Hi everyone, so we're going to have a little look about what you're required to do for your advanced higher computing science project. Okay, first thing I would encourage you to do is go to the SQE website, go into the advanced higher computing science section and under the section labelled coursework, this document here is going to be um, so important for you throughout this year. Okay, it's got all the information that you need, it's got detailed marking schemes on um, you know what you're going to be assessed against and everything that you need to include okay in it, that document it includes how much support and assistance i'm allowed to give you and um, what evidence you'll need to collect for your project to submit it and um, examples of suitable projects and helping you come up with your own project ideas and what you need to do at all of the stages of the software development um, process throughout your coursework task. Okay, so it's really important that you get that document, download it, have a read through it. I've basically based this presentation off of the instructions for candidates section in there. So everything that I mentioned in this PowerPoint is in that document in a more detailed format. Okay, so definitely have a read over that section. Okay, so let's talk about the marks for your project. Okay, it's broken down into our five main development stages. So you look at analysis of a problem first, you then go on to creating a design of a solution to that problem, implementing it, designing, um, sorry, testing the solution, and then creating an evaluation of the solution. And you can see the mark break down there 10 marks, 20, 30, 15, and 5. Okay. Um, that creates 80 marks overall and the whole course is out of 160 marks so you'll have an 80 mark exam and an 80 mark project so that makes the project worth 50 percent of your overall mark which is nice because it means you can walk into that exam feeling confident if you've created a lot of um, or done a lot of work on your advanced higher project to make that a good quality okay the next thing you have to think about is a criteria now basically you can create your project on anything as long as it meets the criteria and we're going to talk through the checklist of what it needs to include okay um a lot of people in the past at woodmill high school have picked to do a game absolutely fine what i would say is try not to do anything too complex okay um it can be a software development um project it can be a database focused project or it can be a web focused project and it has to create uh, it has to include two concepts from each of the areas whichever one you pick and the, the the new level of complexity that's been added to the new style advanced hair projects is you need to include some kind of integration and i'll talk through what that is in a second the last thing your project must have is validation so any inputs you're asked to include you have to be validated and that could be done in a complex way perhaps like you know required fields or maximum field lengths or it can just be um, you know, people design so that you have to click on specific buttons to put input in and that can how you can validate it as well. OK, um, so your project is completely your own. You can decide what it is. Um, if you feel the need to run it past me, you can. If you've had any ideas already, remember, we're going to have a meeting on Teams to have a little talk through them. Absolutely fine. OK, OK, so most of the people at Woodville High School have chosen in the past to do a software development focused um, project just because that's where they felt that their strengths lie. It is absolutely up to you whether you want to do a more web based pro project or a database based project. Um, and all the information, as I said, is in that pack already. Have a look through it. I'm just going to talk you through the software development one because there's probably, you know, 99% of you guys are going to pick this type of project. So it makes more sense for me to break this one down a little bit. Okay. Now, if you're doing a software development project, you basically need to choose between one or two options you're either going to create an object orientated program which is the type of things that we're going to be learning about this year or you can create a more procedural programming and um, kind of like the visual basic that we've been working with over the last few years um, but regardless of which one you pick you can obviously do it on python or you can do it on visual basic or if you really wanted to you could do it on a different topic the good thing about using python is the pi game access means that you can make a lot more kind of visually pleasing games um, than you can on Visual Basic. But again, your advanced hair project is very much your own and it's individualized and you're going to have to do a lot of your own research. So it's up to you what you choose to do it on. And obviously your analysis will be one kind of the stages that you're thinking about the inputs and outputs and what your uh, program's going to do. And um, it'll allow you to make a decision about what you're going to do. Okay. If you pick an advanced hire, um, sorry, an object oriented programming task, then you have to include an array of objects, which obviously we're going to learn to use throughout this year. If you're going to pick a, a procedural programming um, task, then it has to use a 2D array or an array of records, which you've used an array of records at um, higher already. Um, it must include one standard algorithm, which we're obviously going to learn about this year as well. So a binary search where you have to find something, um, an insertion or a bubble sort. And that's quite often used for things like a high scores table. So you can put things in order of who's got the least, um, you know, the least 
lives left or the most coins collected or whatever if it's a game. The last part is your integration. Now, basically, if you're choosing to do a software development project, it has to integrate with either a database um, for perhaps storing the data or, you know, the high score tables information or whatever, or it has to integrate with a, um, a website. OK, a simple web page which could be used to perhaps input information or display information. Now, when this is done, remember, it's not the same as um, working with like Microsoft Access. We're going to be using PHP MyAdmin, servers, um, MySQL, all that type of stuff. So we're obviously going to learn about that. But you can understand the concept just now to start thinking about your project. Um, a lot of people in the past have picked a software development project and then a simple table which will store score their high scores which they can then sort and that covers all the bases and you can pretty much make any program that you want if you have a, a score and it includes um an array of objects or a two-dimensional array or something okay um one thing i want to say with the integration is that the database or the web um page that you're going to create to integrate with your advanced hair project doesn't need to also be completed to an advanced higher level so it will be like a national five one table database and it's not going to be super complex as well okay so it's a bolt on to the side of your advanced higher project rather than a whole separate other um complex system to create okay one thing I would suggest you do do is have a look at this page, which is your checklist. And this is embedded into that large document that I mentioned earlier on. When you go through, um, for example, will the solution to your problem involve implementing two advanced hair concepts? If you picked to create a, a game which had a high score table, the two concepts would probably be you're going to use an array of objects, tick, and you're going to use a, you know, a bubble sort to sort your high scores table tick, in which case that's met. And you go down all the questions and if no is to the answer to any of the questions, then you basically can't do it for your project. OK, but they're quite broad. So you should be able to meet it fairly easily by coming up with um, an idea. OK, we then move on to your stages of development. And in the document that is provided by the SQA, it tells you what needs to be included. It tells you what the mark breakdown for these things are, which is really nice. And it tells you, if you have a little look at the marking scheme, what the, the examiners are looking at when they're going to be marking your coursework or your project. So under analysis, you're looking for a description of the problem, use case diagrams, a breakdown of your requirements specification, which has got um, a higher weighting in that section, and then your project planning, which we've been looking at, so your Gantt charts and your work breakdown structures and that type of thing. Okay. Under design, you have um, more marks for your project design. Now, if you're doing a website, that would be, you know, um, different parts of your design for your web page, site maps, all that type of stuff. Um, and then obviously, you, if you're doing a database, then it would be your design for your tables. You would be looking at entity relationship diagrams, all that type of stuff. Um, and then under user interface design, obviously, that's the design of what your program is going to look like or what your um, database is going to look like front screen or your website is going to look like on the actual pages okay um project design i should say for your software development projects is going to be um uml diagrams which we're going to have a look at a different style of them class diagrams if you're doing object orientated or it could be pseudocode structure diagrams all the things that we've learned about over the last few years okay so that's quite a large section under implementation obviously a copy of all of your code whether that be web uh, database or uh, software development related um, screenshots of any parts of user interfaces and things like that to show what they look like and how they've been designed. Um, there's an extra little bit inside implementation where you gain some marks for including into your project a new skill that's not been taught to you by the advanced higher course. So something perhaps if you were creating a game and you were doing some sort of platform integration or something, a little level above just to show that you're at that stage, you know, at that advanced level stage where you can start to go and have a look at your own concepts and embed them into your games. So a research and a new skill and a little write up on that is included in the implementation. You can get some easy extra marks. And then a log of your ongoing testing. So that could just it could be in any format you like. You could have a Word document, you put little bits of information in. It could be a, a jotter or a book that you have that you put information in. Um, or a lot of people sometimes leave internal commentary in their program with ongoing testing that they kind of comment out and stuff. So it's up to you how you want to, to record those things. But again, that um, document gives you guidance on how you can do that. OK, um, testing includes your final test plan obviously that important requirements testing and that's why it's good that your requirements specification and your analysis is done well because you're going to refer back to that in your testing 
Um, you're going to do a little persona and test case as well. Um, so one thing I would say is really important to try and pick a project where you can kind of envisage a client, even if it's a game you're creating, then can you aim your target audience to be, you know, your little brother and sister or your grand grandpa? Doesn't matter who it is, but see if you can think about, you know, someone in mind to be your persona or test case, especially if it's a non game related thing. If it's something you're thinking about making for the, the admin ladies in the office that you think would make their job easier brilliant because when you create it when you kind of link it back to a client it makes it more real and your testing and things becomes a lot more easier because you could actually give people tests okay in the evaluation you're going to obviously compare it uh, with fitness for purpose does it actually match that description and um, requirement specification that you came up with in the beginning how maintainable is it how robust is it and again there's information there on how much marks those things are worth um, as well that's a much smaller section than the other four I would say OK, one thing I wanted to say, I asked a lot of my advanced hire uh, students over the last wee while um, or the few years what their biggest sort of um, advice was for anybody who was moving on to doing their advanced hire project. And their answer was manage your time. OK, so your task for over the summer holidays is I want you to try and come up with your idea, your concept for your project and complete the analysis section. OK, that's my first piece of guidance to you to try and do that for coming back after the summer. That gets you started. And then as you learn the different parts of the advanced hire course, you can start to create it for your project. One thing to remember is your advanced hire project is your own. OK, we only have four periods. If we go back to the normal timetable in class, we only have four periods in class. And that has to be for on the ground learning. The two other periods, which should be your advanced hire periods, but are non-contact with a teacher, are when you should be working on your project or working on it at home. OK, so it is your job to keep on top of this. You know, there might be points throughout the year where I might ask people how they're getting on um, or what stages that they're at. But really, you should be making a scan chart over the summer holidays and then you should be trying to stick to it. So think about in your plans when, you know, when there's going to be crunch time, when you're not going to have time to spend in your advanced hair project, maybe around prelim time or over Christmas. Maybe you want to have time off. If you want to have time off, you need to work that time into the rest of the year. OK, so manage your time effectively. There's nothing worse if it gets to after prelim time next year. We're in the middle of, you know, middle of February or something like that. Your project is due for the Easter holidays next year, say start of April, end of March. And then all of a sudden you've not actually started anything. You've done your analysis, you've not done any more, or you've done design, or you've done bits of coding and you've not done any of your other paperwork. Okay, so manage your time, try to do it in order. The document says, you know, you do your analysis, then you do your design, you move on to your implementation. You can do agile, you can move back and forward, you could design one part of it, you could design one part and then go on. Obviously, what we're learning in class will have a little bit of an impact. So as soon as we're back in that classroom, I want to try and get you guys on software development concepts so you can see what binary searches and bubble sorts look like. And you can see, you know, what um, my SQL on PHP, my admin looks like. But obviously we can't do everything in one go at the same time. Um, so we just have to have a little bit of think about that. OK, um, but if you've got any questions, we're going to have the teams drop in um, on Wednesday morning this week. So let me know. And I'll speak to you later, guys. Okay, see you later. Bye.